Hi, I'm Larry here of Xbox Live's Major Nelson. The team recently had a chance to go hands-on with PopCap's upcoming Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare. I wanted to take advantage of our time with the game to put together a little stream of consciousness preview highlighting the features that made an impression on me. Now, most noticeable up front is the style. The vibrant, colorful, and chaotic visuals are a blast of fresh air, especially for a shooter. Don't let the cartoonish front fool you, though. There are several systems at play here, working together to create a sophisticated experience that is uniquely garden warfare. Take the Gardens and Graveyards multiplayer mode, which act as a combination platter of the Conquest and Rush modes from Battlefield 4. The zombies are always on offense, attempting to build graveyards in the plants garden by squatting in the highlighted zone, Conquest style. If they succeed, a new portion of the map is made available, pushing the front line forward and the plants backwards to another defense point. The final objective differs in each map, though. For example, here you see the zombies need to plant several bombs to secure victory. What makes gardens and graveyards really work, though, is how all the classes play off each other. There are four classes per side, and each of them sport three unique abilities. For example, the Foot Soldier ZPG might take a while to fire, but it does massive damage. Likewise, the Scientist's Warp ability can rapidly close the gap between you and an enemy, getting you in range for the shotgun-like Goo Blaster. Meanwhile, the Sunflower provides much-needed healing, which can make for a devastating combo when you've got multiple Sunflowers working together. Another favorite is the Pea Shooter's ability to root, turning his basic attack into a howitzer-like cannon. My personal favorite, though, is the Cactus's Garlic Drone, which from the sky can spot enemies, fire from above, and even call in deadly corn strikes to the ground below. Not only does each class sport three unique abilities, but you can also unlock variants of each class. We saw the Toxic Pea, whose shots do extra damage over time, Shadow Flower, and the Power Cactus, who can charge up her shots for devastating burst damage. Another feature that caught my eye brings us back to the franchise's tower defense roots. Plants can grow friends in designated pots around each map to help defend the gardens. These include several classics from the original game, such as the Scaredy Shroom, Ice Shroom, Pea Cannon, and more. Likewise, zombies can summon their undead pals from dirt piles, sending them to storm the objective. This can help create some much welcome distractions among the enemy team. Now you don't have an unlimited number of plants or zombies to summon. You actually unlock them from sticker books, which brings us to the game's economy. Everything you do in the game earns you coins, assists, critical hits, kills, heals, capturing objectives, they all help you constantly rack up coins as you play. In between matches, you can take your coins to the sticker shop and spend them on different packs of stickers. For example, the reinforcement pack gives you new plants and zombies to summon. More expensive packs can unlock character items to customize your look, weapon upgrades, and the rare character pieces which unlock the class variants. If you played Mass Effect 3, this is very similar to their multiplayer loot crate system, but with even more potential loot. You're constantly working towards new items and upgrades, which helps add weight to every match you play. I hope you enjoyed this quick look at Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare. The game releases exclusively on Xbox 360 and Xbox One on Tuesday, February 25th. We'll see you on Xbox Live. Thanks for watching. Play it first on Xbox.